Ken Rosewall was born in Sydney in November 1934, the only child of two tennis enthusiasts, and he began playing on the family court aged three. He was a natural left-hander who learned to play right-handed. Ken was married to Wilma McIver from 1956 until Wilma's death in 2020. Aged 18, Rosewall was trying to become the youngest Australian champion in 1953. In the final, he played Merv Rose. In the French final, Rosewall beat Vic Satius. In the 1953 Davis Cup Challenge round, Rosewall represented Australia against United States. And the morning after, in his hotel room, the youngster on whom Australia is depending reads newspapers which tell him, it's up to you, Ken. The youngster with a tremendous game ahead of him is all praise for his teammate. That's my boy. And Lewis Hode, not a condemned man, eats a hearty breakfast. He can afford to smile. Just a couple of kids, aren't they? And get there two of the world's best tennis players already. In time, they may prove to be two of the finest ever. But that's in the future. What Australia and the world is interested in right now is today. Coming up, one of the best rallies in the match. Rosewall using his backhand volley to good effect. Look at Prime Minister Menzies, I wonder why I'm worried. Game, set, match, and cut point again. And congratulations, Mrs. Rosewall. This is a moment without parallel in the history of challenge round play that two players, to say nothing of their age, have won the cup at their first appearance. Rosewall won his second Australian title in 1955 against Hode. Rosewall was, was, was the classic copybook style player. Ground shots, no particular power, lovely rhythm, good movement, a good passing shot, artist. Service was not all that great. In fact, that was possibly the one weakness that he had in the game. Rosewall prevented Hode from winning the Grand Slam by beating him in the US final. The 1956 Davis Cup Challenge round contained Rosewall's last matches as an amateur. Yes, the second game is over. A magnificent shot by Rosewood. Six, six, one, eight, six, seven, five. A good fight and a credit to both players. Well, I'm looking forward to very much uh, uh, starting off on the professional tennis tour. I'm sure I will enjoy it. It was uh, a big decision to make, uh, but uh, I think everyone agrees you have to look to the future, and I'm very happy about that, and I think Wilmer is too. Rosewall lost the 1957 World Tour to Gonzalez though he won the Wembley Pro title that year and the French Pro in 1958. Rosewall won four Wembley Pros from 1960 to 1963, seven French Pros from 1960 to 1966 and the US Pro in 1963 and 1965. 
He won the last World Series tour in 1963, overwhelming rookie pro Rod Laver and just held off the improving Laver in the tournament series that decided the world title in 1964. When Open Tennis arrived in 1968, Rosewall beat Laver in the final of the French Open. He won the US Open in 1970 against Tony Roach. Take more airs. He likes to block it like that. He likes speed. Good. Good serve and a good return. Rose Wall won the Australian Open in 1971 against Arthur Ashe and retained the title the following year against Mal Anderson, becoming the oldest Australian Open men's singles champion, aged 37. Oh, let Corden. Rosewall reached his last Grand Slam final at the US Open in 1974, aged 39, where he was overwhelmed by Jimmy Connors, a man 18 years younger than him. Rosewall retired in 1980. Well, when I was 10 years of age, and I used to lie by the radio and, and listen to Ken Rosewall and Lou Hode, who were just burst onto the scene around 19 years of age and playing for Australia and playing at Wimbledon. And, you know, that was my, my dream at that 10 years of age to one day if I could do that. He was difficult to beat. He never had an off day. If you were fortunate enough to beat him, you really felt it the next day. Every point was like a match point when you played against him because that was his game. And you couldn't overpower Ken unless you had a tremendous serve. It doesn't bother me too much now, but it is a point that's always raised. I would like to have given up one or two other events to, to one, one of the championships of Wimbledon. You know, it's a dream or an ambition of of any young player, I believe, certainly any young Australian player was for me. Uh, you know, I can look back now and say, well, the first two times I lost in the final, I was too young, and then the second two times I lost in the final, I was too old. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.